What's up, everybody? My name is Paul Davis Griffin, and it is fucking hot outside! What's up, Mother Nature? Are you mad because we keep chopping down trees to make houses? Look, we need those houses because you keep making it so fucking hot outside! This week's topic comes to you from Lulu Belt Gaming, who says, Ramble about Harry Potter. Well, Lulu, your wish is my command. F fuck, that's genius. Uh, I, I will cast a spell which will- no, the moment's passed. Like every other child who grew up in the 90s, I obsessed over the Harry Potter books as they were coming out, with each title falling deeper in love with the characters in the universe. So hats off to you, Miss Rowling, for your incredible dedication to detail. I actually had a really hard time writing this video. I feel like the fan base of Harry Potter basically knows everything that the internet has to offer, but at the same time, if I make the information too convoluted, I'm gonna lose anyone who's not a hardcore fan. Then I decided, fuck you guys. You know, it's you know, there's a fan theory that the Dursleys are such horrible people to Harry because Harry's a horcrux and so the dark magical energy has negative effects on their minds. Just like when Ron was exposed to the locket horcrux or Ginny with the journal. That one made me reevaluate my entire life up to this point. In case you didn't already know, there's a website called Pottermore that lets you experience wizardry education firsthand brought to you by the author herself. But more importantly, it'll place you in your respective Hogwarts house. Personally, I'm a Hufflepuff, and before you fuckers go to the comment to make fun of me and my people, let me provide you a pre -retort. Our house animal is a fucking badger. Enough said, watch this shit. Plus our headquarters is right next to the dining hall, so... You know, fuck you. J.K. Rowling wrote a draft of the last chapter of the seventh book 17 years before it was published. That's seven years even before the first book was published. Talk about preparation. But that Neville, though... Mm. No one could have prepared for that, hot damn. At the end of the first book, Neville gets awarded by Dumbledore for trying to stop Harry, Ron, and Hermione from sneaking out after hours. Which is absolutely ridiculous, because when he caught them leaving, he was just like, I'll fight you. What a little prick! I mean, you don't think that's a little bit of an overreaction? They're just trying to, I don't know, save the fucking skull! And if your excuse is Dumbledore is trying to teach Neville a lesson, then this is an example of Professor Favoritism at its finest. What, unless they took the time to positively impact the attitude of all other 280 Hogwarts students? Students? I don't think he did. You just fucked over 75% of your student population because you wanted to teach four kids a lesson about bravery? Well, that's really nice for you. If you're in Gryffindor! Stupid hippie looking Gandalf. Apparently we've been pronouncing Voldemort's name wrong this entire time. JK says that the T at the end of his name is actually silent, which makes his name Voldemort. Which to me just kind of makes him sound like a vampire. Voldemort! Some of you may be wondering how this detail got through seven films, and to me it makes perfect sense. We're talking about a lead character whose biggest struggle through the first two movies is pronouncing Diagon Alley. Diagon Alley. Diagon Alley? What the fuck is that? Did you fart? Come on, Harry. What do you need to practice in front of a mirror a couple times before you do it? In the first book, Harry defeats Voldemort by lightly touching his face. Kid's ten, by the way, okay? 64-year-old Dark Lord is defeated by a ten-year-old. Then he's defeated in the second book because Harry stabs his diary. The climax of the second Harry Potter book is when a child stabs an old man's diary. In the third book, all Harry does is deal with some weird family drama. Then in the fourth book, Voldemort overcomes his allergy to Harry touching his face, and Harry has no backup plan. Come on, man, you had two fucking years to plan this encounter, okay? You know he's coming. He comes around the same time every year. If being the chosen one means you don't actually have to do shit, then fuck it. I could be the chosen one. You, you could be the chosen one. Is that supposed to be the point or something? That's stupid, but I'm probably being a little bit too harsh on a book series that has literally enlightened the young minds of millions of people. I seriously only have love for this series, even if Gryffindor is the reason no one knows how to spell my last name. And I think that's where I'm gonna cut myself off today, guys. I, at some point I stopped giving you facts and I just kinda started all out ranting. But that's okay! It's more fun this way. If you have a topic that you wanna hear me ramble aimlessly about like I did in this video, you can just let me know in the comment section, or you can let me know on my Twitter, Facebook, or Instagram account. Those links are in the description. Thanks for joining me today, guys. I I'm posting these vlogs twice a month now, and I hope to see you there. Okay, virtual high five. Bye, guys. <laughs>